Imim is by no means the only way to do this. And once you start digging into it, Imim is kind of primitive in some ways, right? In what ways is it primitive? It ignores some things that we know are very useful about language. It ignores the word frequencies, right? Because you're measuring either, either the pair occurs in a document or in a passage or it doesn't occur. You're not counting the frequency at all. Uh, you're ignoring the length of passage. Well, I guess if you're taking fixed like window, it doesn't matter. But if you, if you do it over different length documents, then uh, you would want to take document length into account. Uh, it ignores clumping and all sorts of other things. Right? So can you do better? Uh, yes, of course you can. Um, you can build a similarity metric for words just like you build a similarity metric for documents. Right? So for documents, we built our TF, TF-IDF weighted cosine. And we said that that's a good way to measure if one document is similar to another document. Now, uh, you could take the same idea and apply it to terms. If you take a term and look at a set of documents in which it occurs, that is a vector. Right? It's a vector because a term is going to have a number for each document, and that number will reflect how important that term is in that document. So if you have two terms, you have two vectors, and you can measure cosine between them. And the closer the vectors are, so two terms that occur in the same documents in approximately similar frequencies, will have a very high cosine value. And terms that never occur together will have a cosine value of zero. Right? So you can just use cosine to measure the similarity of two terms. Another thing that I want to point out is um, cosine, some of you know this already. For some of you, uh, it's, it's a new thing. Uh, many of you have heard about the correlation coefficient. Right? So this is your basic statistical bread and butter. How do you, men how do you measure the strength of relation between two events in statistics? Um, Oh, sorry, between two variables in statistics, uh, you measure their correlation coefficient. So you look at the covariance and divide it by the product of the standard deviations. So what I'm going to claim is when you're working with terms, your covariance, your correlation coefficient, which is, by the way, right there, is going to be really, really similar to the cosine, which is right there. Can anyone tell me why? So what's the difference between the correlation coefficient and the cosine? By the way, there is a, uh, so there is a type on the correlation coefficient. These are supposed to be variances, so this is supposed to be squared. That's how we compute the variance. Okay. So what's the difference between the cosine and the correlation coefficient? The mean is zero. The means, right? So the only way they can be the same is if the means are zero. Right. Now, what do these means refer to? What is mu of A? Yes, it's the average weight of word A across what? Across the entire collection of documents. The average is always computed over the entire collection. Right. And what do we know about words other than <coughs> stop words? They're rare. They're really, really rare. So what is the mean going to be? It's not going to be zero, but it's going to be very close to zero. Right? So that's another way to think about what the cosine is. A cosine is really close to computing a correlation between two random variables. And that's because we're dealing with extremely sparse event spaces. Words don't occur in most of the documents. So the mean word occurrence, the mean weight of the word, a is going to be almost zero. So when you're computing the cosine, you're really computing the correlation coefficient. It's just masquerading as, as, a, as, as a similarity metric. Right. <clears throat> OK, good. So this gives you a way to figure out if two terms are similar or not. And of course, you still have many issues to consider, right? Even if you have, even if you have a really good metric that tells you that word fish is related to this word, uh, you still have to decide how many synonyms am I going to add, right? Do I threshold the similarity? Do I take top k? Um, what if you have multiple terms in the query, right? What do I do then? This is a technique that is meant for expanding single terms. So what if I have fish tank, right? Do I do the expansion for fish and then do the expansion for tank and then merge the two synsets? That's not very good. Why? Because tank is going to bring in lots of things that are completely unrelated to fish. Get military tanks, you'll get uh, you'll get all sorts of other things. So once you combine them, you will actually have a bit of nonsense on your hands. Um, 
So, um, so all these issues that you have to deal with them somehow, and hopefully uh, we'll cover a way uh, to do it uh, in, a, in a principled uh, way. Right. Okay, um, so now uh, these, uh, 